Can I get you? Yeah, that might be even better. Okay. Ed Wright. This is his work today. Mm -hmm. Wow. But we know him from history because what, BJ? His wife was chosen by John F. Kennedy. Handpicked by, well, I don't know if it was handpicked or not, but he was chosen by John F. Kennedy he said, yeah. to be the first astronaut candidate, first black astronaut candidate. Uh -huh. This is before May Jemison. This is before uh, Hi, how you guys the brother that passed and all that. Yeah. Uh -huh. His wife is the first. Uh -huh. they, they may leave him out some history book. Wow. Uh -huh. But he is the first. So you went to NASA yeah. and all of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what happened? Air Force pilot, right? Yeah. So, what did what was the problem? Huh? What was the problem? Well, well, the president Kennedy put me in a program and and he got killed. Oh, so, there he so, goes. And so, and so the politics uh, are, are Johnson won his own black guy. Mm-hmm. So oh, they had another. <laughs> no, no, they just uh, uh, they they told me to step aside until this other until Johnson's guy. Got in there and got in the space, and mm -hmm. then I would I would come back after, you know, mm -hmm. and then I was I wouldn't take all the first glory. He would, you know, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so you were disappointed and decided to start making monuments. I know I'm making a fast foot uh -huh. forward in your well, your career. Well, it, it, it evolved into that. Uh, I left the military and went to Denver, and I was in business for quite a few years. And, mm -hmm. and then our first black lieutenant governor was elected to the office. And he came by my house and he saw some art that I had done from my house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he asked me to do a sculpture of him for the Capitol building. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I don't do that kind of sculpture because I had a big construction company and I was welding nails together, mm -hmm. pieces of metal and mm -hmm. stuff. And I said, I don't do that kind of art. So he said, no, dude, you're going to do this and you're going to quit doing what you're doing. And you're going to make monuments honoring what black people did in America. And I thought he was crazy. Uh -huh. And... Uh, so he, 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 I ended up building the sculpture and it's in the Capitol and then he gave me a project from, from the state uh, to do a series of bronzes on why blacks came out west. Hmm. And that was the first uh, big project I did and the National Park Service got a hold of that and then they hired me to do a whole bunch of memorials and then from there it was just, it was, just what you did? It was chaotic. Amazing. So are you here in L.A. now? Well, I have a studio here. My main studio is in Denver. I got, okay. a, I got a big thirty thousand square foot studio in Denver. Yeah. And uh, and then we and then I, I do some casting, and I have a studio in Berkeley as well. Wow. Do you know Tina, or did you know Tina? Oh, Allen? God, yeah, was, she was yeah. a good friend, man. I yeah. hated to see her pass. Yeah. This is amazing. Really kind of. Oh, yeah, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. This is Tulsa. This is uh, you know when they burned down the uh, town of Greenwood. That's yeah. right. 1921. You got it, buddy. And so this is a memorial to that because this is the ground that they burned burned it down. I didn't know they had a memorial. Wow. Yeah, I'm just 30 just feet. This is 30 feet tall. Yeah, Three we just years ago. yeah. Okay. Years ago. And, and this is all history starting in Africa with the slaves that were slaves of Indians rather than white folks uh -huh. because the Indians brought their slaves with them when they came to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And so and this is uh, the whole riot, how the riot started uh, at the Trail of Tears where they made the Indians walk all the way to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. This is John Hope Franklin's uh, uh, dad up here. He was a, an attorney. He was a Seminole Negro in, uh, Indian. Yeah. And uh, so uh, it was all mixed up down there and they had mm -hmm. this you know, the Seminoles and the Cherokees and Choctaws, and, and, uh, but they, if slaves were escaping mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, into the Indian Territory uh, on the East Coast, and uh, it, the slaves that got there early intermarried, and they were part of the Tribal Council. And so all the new slaves that came in, when, when all the stuff went down, had to stay slaves. <laughs> so you got blacks. Mm -hmm. That are in, on a travel council, and yeah, the black slaves. Wow. And when they walked to Oklahoma. Wow, what a story. Who are you listening? Francis. Okay, Sue Francis. Ah, I've heard that name. Yeah. Okay, so Sue Francis. Yeah. And you're in here with Mr. Dwight, but you do what now? I do more abstract uh, oh. pieces. He does more figurative, and I do more abstract uh -huh. uh, my own my own pieces. Um, and what we do is we use the lost wax process. So I don't know if you're familiar with that, but basically what you do is you um, sculpt the piece in clay, which is right over there. You can do clay. And then what you do is you make a mold of it, right? Mm -hmm. And you pour a wax from that mold. 
and then that wax, which is over there, and what you do is the wax, you put it in a, you dip it in a formula that forms uh, a really, really finely cut grass that forms a, a ceramic uh, casing around the wax. And then you heat the bronze up and you pour it through and it, you lose the wax, but you have the bronze. Oh, wow. So that's why they so call it the lost it. wax process, yeah. And then once you have the piece, you know, then you have to clean it up, you have to clean the bronze up and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, and then you patina it. That is beautiful. You heat this up. This is Ed's piece. Uh -huh. So you heat this up, uh, and then you add different types of chemical and coloring to, to get the patina. It's called patina. Patina, I've heard yeah. that. Yeah. And so let me look at some of your pieces. Yeah, so this absolutely. is this is like a mother and child? Or? No, no. Together. That's one. Oh, man yeah. and woman. Yeah. Okay, I got it now. <laughs> yeah. This one, too. Oh. Um, this one is living it up. Yeah. Yeah, she is. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. These are still in clay, so I haven't done those yet. So I don't, uh, they're untitled. Okay. Pieces. Oh. oh, I see. So that's how it looks. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that's and so And these are the weird... Uh, <laughs> well, now you know. <laughs> so that's so these are the pieces she meant. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. So that's the molds process. Really? So this is what you do is, you know, once you made the mold and everything, then you take this piece, the wax, and you dip it, you mm -hmm. roll it, dip it, roll it, dip it, roll it, create that uh, ceramic piece around it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get the hot bronze and it goes through and you lose the wax. You have the so the ceramic piece. is a liquid? No, basically what it is, yeah, it is. So mm -hmm. you liquid, you put it on the thing. Mm -hmm. Right, you put it in there, you put the wax in there, and then you roll it in this finely, finely ground, like glass and other stuff around it. Uh -huh. Then you, that dries, then you have to dip it again and roll it again. Right, that dries, and you dip it again and roll it again. So it's a process, you have to wow. dip it several times, yeah. Wow. That, that's how they do those big, like, statues? Yeah, yeah, he's done many, he's done, I mean, oh, yeah, like most of the, um, the South Carolina piece was cast in the studio. He cast it himself. Oh. Yeah, he's got a huge studio. Wow. <laughs> and it was, uh, you know, the panels, you had to do the panels, they were six foot tall panels. And um, yeah, they were all done in the studio. So, do you have a website so people can see the stuff? I don't have a website. Ed has a website. Really? Yeah, edwight.com. Edwight.com. There you go. <laughs> Thank you yeah, so much. You bet. I'm so glad <laughs> she married? She married at 13. This is Gandhi's wife. Yes. Gandhi's, they married at 13. Both of them were 13. They were married for 64 years. They had four children, but he would leave for five years or seven years at a time, you know, where he was fighting for his, his cause. You know, he would go to jail for a long time while she was there raising the kids, and their relationship really came at a crossroads when she was uh, very, very ill. She was near death, and uh, he decided to send her a letter and said, well, you know what? It's going to be okay because your death is going to be a symbol of our cause. And so, it's okay. Know that I'm going to be okay because I'm going to know that your death is a symbol of our cause and it's going to actually turn out better and it's good that you're dying before I am because it'll be more significant and he really so he was so engaged in his cause he couldn't look past that to see that his wife was dying and that's the letter that he wrote her in his last wishes to her that's what she was supposed to read before he died before she died so she was able she didn't die <laughs> but uh, at that time, you know, but but that was their relationship, and that kind of encapsulated what their love was about. Mm -hmm. So the lyrics, the things that are written on all over a painting are their wedding vows. Right. Which, oh wow. You know, which really speaks to where he felt her purpose was was to support his cause. Right. That was it. Right. And this is Rita Marley, who wow. actually inspired me so much. Rita Marley. That woman was a saint. Because Bob had a lot of women. He had a lot of women. He had 14 children yes. outside of their marriage with eight different women. And they're all singing. <laughs> exactly. And they're all singing. And they're all performing. Right. They have their own man. 
But the thing is, like, she was half forced to look away, and he tried to always remind her, I remember you, I, re I know you, you're not, you're, you're present to me, even though you feel like you're not present, I remember you, which is why he wrote the song, No Woman, No Cry. Mm -hmm. That's her, that's the song that he wrote to her, yeah. to remind her that she, he loved her. Right. And all you see, I know you see all these different things going on, yeah. but I, I truly love you, yeah. you're the one. And so those are the lyrics that are written over her. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. That's what that is. Okay. And then we have Princess Diana, who we all know was married in, you know, a very interesting circumstance. Married to a man who all along was in love with someone else from the very beginning. He never really was in love with her. It was really about who was in love with Camilla. And so this painting was really about her. Okay under the veil and not able to come into her own self until until she died she didn't realize that he was um but like she never realized that he was in love with someone else the entire time they were together wow. you know he would wear camilla um monograms couplings when they were doing interviews together he always made sure camilla knew that he loved her and whenever they would ask you know oh are you so in love she would say yes i'm so in love and he would say, oh, whatever, love me. Oh. And that was always his response. Okay. And she found that response like three times in different interviews that they were given. That, that was the way that he was trying to let Camilla know, like, look, like, I'm just going to tell, I'm doing what I need to do. This is for the British monarchy, but, you know, love, whatever that means. And that's where that came. So the thread between all of these people or that they are all women of sacrifice. You know, they're all women that lost themselves in these marriages. And so now she's starting to unveil them. Now Rita Marley is becoming Rita Marley Unveiled. And that's where Rita Marley Unveiled is coming. Uh -huh. So this is Rita Marley Unveiled. And look so at that face, how strong her. it is. She stripped her of all of the extra adornment and all the veil and everything that came with Rita, the makeup. Now it's just her and herself and loving herself and finding herself and that's what this is. So now this is the new phase of these women. They're bigger than ever. They're more omnipresent. You know, they they mean they know what their worth is. Does Rita know this? She does she know that this exists? No, not that I know. We've had one person that came by that said that they know Rita and they were gonna try to get let her know because this is I mean it's a great portrait. It's beautiful. Wow. And, yeah, and so now we're starting to work on Diana's new picture of uh, oh, her yeah, unveiling. That's going to be her unveiling. Uh -huh. Yeah, that and goes with that kind of answer, isn't it? Have you, have, have you learned about this? No. Where is, is that somebody in her family? No. This is his This is my favorite. This is like his one. Uh huh. So this is Elizabeth Keckley. Elizabeth Keckley lives in the Lincoln White House. Oh, okay. And she was a slave in the Lincoln White House. Mm -hmm. and made all of the dresses for the first lady, mm -hmm. all of her ball gowns. So she became this big couture dress designer, and all of you know the, the first lady's friends were starting to come to her to get their dresses, and then all the army wives came to them to get their dresses. Meanwhile, she's a slave living in the White House, and they are charging an exorbitant amount of mo money for her dresses while she's sitting there making them all. And so not she, getting paid. So she asked for her freedom, and they said, well, okay, Two thousand dollars, which is like a million dollars a day. She's like, okay. So she made two thousand dollars, and by selling these dresses, purchased her freedom, and then purchased her children's freedom. They got all of her children out of, out of slavery. So that's what this series is about. It's really about pioneers and industries that made strides that are never recognized. No, it's not important to know these names, you know, but we should have been the first couture black designer, you know, that bought herself and her family out of slavery by making these dresses. And that's what this is about. This is, of course, Ruby Bridges, mm -hmm. who is the first girl at six years old to desegregate school. You know, and it's always, you see the image usually of her with all the police behind yeah, yeah. her. Yes, yes. And she really tried to erase that his presence and make it about Ruby. And she was like, I wonder what Ruby at six years old could have been thinking. Like, <laughs> as she is walking out, and they had, like, you know, coffins filled with burning babies. They were throwing tomatoes at her, like, throwing bottles at her. All these things were happening as a six year old is having to, like, walk through this fire. 
you know, and so she's made this a 3D element. She wanted her to be stepping out of this time in history, stepping out of this phase. So this shoe is actually taken from a real shoe and added on. Everything is, is made so that you're, you're believing that she's stepping out of that time. How do you spell the artist's name? Kalida, C A L I D A Rawls, R A W L E S. Wow, so you can Google her and she has a KaledaLaws.com? Yep, you can absolutely Google her. She has a great website with everything mm -hmm. listed. And all the stories are there yes. behind all the figures. Because as you go down the hallway, yes. you learn more and more and more. Every oh, yeah. single figure is a different historical person that you didn't know existed. And that it changes you. Like, every time I leave here, I go home and I can't stop thinking about these people. And I've gone home and researched and wanted to know more and more and more. And, you know, it's, it's to me, it's enhancing my life. It's making me feel like I should... I look at her face every time I, she says something back to me. Every single time. And I'm an entrepreneur. So, you know, I have to find a way and find my motivation every single day to get up and do what I need to do. And that's, that's what does it for me. That's what I do. Yeah, that's Thank amazing. you so much. What a lesson. She looks like a dancer with the ice. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, here we go. So you're still doing PR things? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. One, two, three.